What if I told you that you're possibly one click away from getting a massive FPS boost in pretty much any game? AMD FSR 3.0 Fluid Motion Frames aka AI frame generation. This may be single-handedly one of the greatest things to happen to gamers and it may just be the reason as to why you don't need that GPU upgrade. Now if you're wondering what this is exactly and whether or not you can utilize it for yourself then you've clicked on the right video as I'll be showing you how to enable AMD FSR 3.0 and showcasing how powerful it can be. Just before I get into it all if you guys enjoyed today's video and find it to be useful then be sure to smash that like button down below and if you guys want to see more of my content then be sure to hit that subscribe button as always i will leave timestamps down below so you guys can skip to whatever you'd like to see now what exactly is ai frame generation well i'm no geek but i'll do my best to explain simply put afmf uses ai to generate additional frames in between already present frames increasing your fps beyond the in-game limit i initially found out about this whilst playing modern warfare 3 on stream and i had a massive increase from around 120 fps to a whopping 250 fps this however can have a big drawback which i'll be explaining a little bit later on in the video for now though let me show you how to actually enable it Simply open up the AMD Adrenaline software and under the Gaming tab, click on Graphics. Near the top and just under the Radeon Super Resolution option, you will find an option called AMD Fluid Motion Frames. Enable this option and really that's about it. It's really that simple. However, there are a few things to note and I highly suggest reading through AMD's recommended use information, which you can do by hovering over the question mark next to the fluid motion frames option. Also, it is important to note that this feature is only available on AMD 6000 and 7000 series graphics cards. And if you have a GPU from either series, but don't see this option, then make sure to update your drivers. You do regularly update your drivers, right? Sweet. You now have the power of AI frame generation at your fingertips, but how well does it actually work? Again, I am no geek, but I did do some thorough testing to showcase this technology in action. And to compare, I played a few games with and without using FSR 3.0. I should also note that I ran these tests using my normal settings and whilst recording at the same time, so the results you get may differ from mine. First up, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Without FSR 3.0, I got around 170 FPS while standing still and using Fidelity Cas, the previous go-to. With FSR 3.0 set to the quality preset, however, I got an average of around 245 fps and when i use the ultra performance preset i got a whopping 290 fps on average the game also kept most of its quality even on the ultra performance preset making it way better than fsr 2.0 however mw3 has the ability to enable fsr 3.0 directly in its options likely making it more optimized so everything from this point is tested using games that do not have this feature built into them i started off by testing sea of thieves and i did so whilst facing towards the game's largest trading outpost as that seemed to be the most taxing on my GPU. Disabled I got an average of around 68 FPS. Enabled on the other hand gave me an additional 67 FPS on average, literally double the frame rate. I then tested out good old GTA 5. With FSR 3.0 disabled I got an average of around 85 FPS. With FSR 3.0 enabled however I got an average of 200 FPS. That's another massive 115 FPS increase. I then tested out some Rocket League, but it was hard to find a good average as the FPS constantly spiked between 380 and 600 plus FPS. With FSR 3.0 enabled, however, the FPS not only improved, but also stabilized at around 640 FPS. Counter-Strike 2, on the other hand, was a different story. Disabled, I got an average of around 170 FPS. Whilst having FSR 3.0 enabled, actually made my FPS worse, although more stable at around 130 FPS. This may be due to the CS2 engine, although I'm not quite sure. Valorant, however, had different results. Disabled, I got around 240 FPS on average. Pretty good, but nowhere near the whopping 550 to 700 FPS I got with FSR enabled. Just for the memes, I also tested to see if AFMF could actually break a game's FPS limit as stated by AMD. I tested our Genshin Impact for this since the game is locked at 60 FPS without vertical sync enabled, but unfortunately the software cannot surpass a game's limitations. Better luck next time my fellow Genshin lovers. But then came the ultimate test. Can it run Crisis? 
That is right, I tested out Crisis Remastered on its highest settings, risking my PC exploding for your view and pleasure. With FSR 3.0 disabled, I got an average of around 45 FPS. With FSR 3.0 enabled, however, I got a noteworthy average of around 82 FPS. Nothing game changing in this regard, but still runs smoother than your next gen console. Take the L. Now, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, there is something important to note about this new AI generation technology. If a game has FSR 3.0 built into it like Call of Duty, then the frame rate you see is the frame rate you get. However, if a game does not have this feature built in, it will follow a more lengthy process. Simply put, what the game displays will first have to process through the AI generation before being displayed on your screen. Meaning the game may be running at 60 FPS, but what you actually see on your screen may be at 120 FPS. Now, if you're an experienced PC gamer like myself, you may already have noticed the issue with this. But for those who aren't, let me explain. Due to the fact that what you see is first going through a middleman of sorts, there is a chance of increased input and visual latency. I myself have a pretty decent mid-range PC, so I didn't really notice much of a difference. But then again, I also don't have a high refresh rate monitor, so my eyes are used to such delays. Still, this process doesn't seem to create much of a delay if you have a decent PC. AMD, however, recommends using Radeon Anti-Lag and Radeon Boost if you face such delays. I personally only use the anti-lag feature and I have for a long time because it helps with input latency. I pretty much never use boost though because it can cause a noticeable loss in visual quality although I recommend testing these things out for yourself. And that's about it ladies and gentlemen. The future of PC gaming is here and it's available before GTA 6. If you guys have any questions feel free to ask me down below in the comment section and whilst you're down there be sure to smash that like and subscribe button as it always helps out my content. Until next time though it's been your boy King K. Peace.